Hey there, welcome back to Relationship Talks. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more spicy stories. Now, let's get into today's story video. X cheated on me and falsely accused me of, so I exposed her to everyone she knew. In late May 2016, I invited my three-year infatuation, Kate, out on a coffee date. We made things official three dates later. Our relationship seemed too wonderful to be true over the following seven months. We had so many interests that we seldom differed on anything. We were extremely honest with each other, which led to a fantastic life. We both had decent careers, so we had money to indulge each other, and our families were both supportive of our relationship. As a combat engineer, I was approved into my country's Armed Forces Reserve Program in January 2017. From February through late April, I was in basic training, which was the most difficult thing I had ever done. There were multiple occasions when I doubted my ability to graduate, and Kate's words of encouragement via messages and phone conversations were the only thing that kept me going. She was there when I obtained my BTC certificate, and she never forgot how pleased she was of me. As part of my reserve's work, I'd have to travel away for advanced training in the summer, from early June through late August. Kate was completely supportive of my decision to go 400 kilometers to the training center and spend almost our entire summer vacation working to further my military career. The summer was rough for me. I was a social pariah in every cleat that developed on our course, and I was the punchline to countless jokes. My self-esteem had plunged through the floor, but Kate's faith in me was what kept me going. I finished fifth on the race and owe it all to her, the recession. After we returned home, our relationship began to deteriorate. She claims I wasn't as spontaneous and outgoing before I left. I was dismissive, took tiny jabs and jokes personally, and preferred to stay home, watch movies, and have rather than go out. Unbeknownst to either of us, I had acquired some serious social anxiety as a result of the summer's events, and it had begun to impair our relationship. In 2018, as we approached our two-year anniversary, we got into a furious disagreement over a minor misunderstanding and decided to call it quits. I was devastated until she contacted me three days later and said she wanted to try to mend things. I hadn't seen her in three weeks, but we stayed in contact every day, gradually patching things up. Nothing felt the same when we formally reunited. Every time I spoke with her, I felt as if I were walking on eggshells, which exacerbated my nervousness and harmed our already strained relationship. Then, around the end of July, everything came to a head. The anguish. Kate had met a man named John when she was at school. She saw something in John that she recognized in me, and the two became close friends as a result. He consoled her after our divorce, and he was there for me every time I made a mistake after that. For the fact I was aware of John's existence, but I never believed Kate would engage in any kind of relationship with him. We had made arrangements for me to spend the night at Kate's place after work one of the days. When I arrived, the two of them were sitting on the living room couch, enjoying each other's company. Kate informed her that John had popped by on the spur of the moment and was about to depart the premises. Following John's departure, she became icy and aloof. Once I had accepted the reality that our relationship was gone, I approached her and inquired as to how things were doing between us. She agreed with my feelings and the next day, we made the decision to end our relationship. She agreed that I could stay another night since it was late and she was still concerned about me and she was right. From that point on, Kate remained especially connected to and protective of her phone, even after she had fallen asleep with it in her hand. If I had glanced over and seen her and her friends messaging about anything, she wouldn't have worried, but now she was doing all she could to keep the device hidden from my view. In response to my questions, she indicated that it was an internal matter, which just heightened my anxieties further. After she had fallen asleep, my curiosity got the better of me and I accessed her phone, for which I already had the password and found hundreds of messages between her and John. Messages about how she was now single, how amazing it was that they could finally be in a public relationship, and how she was laughing at everything I did were all sent to me. I shed a few tears gently as I read through each sorrowful passage. My crying wasn't as hushed as I had intended, which was disappointing. When Kate realized what I was up to, she screamed and threw a tantrum in my direction. Having been unable to raise the necessary wrath, or the necessary words to face her. I just gathered my bags and walked away, with Kate swearing and yelling at me throughout. When I returned home late in the morning, I just broke down and sobbed uncontrollably for the rest of the night. I called in sick the next day and spent the rest of the day moping about in my bed. 
several angry letters from Kate's friends and family members arrived in my inbox the next day. In order to preserve her reputation and denounce whatever I may say about her, she told everyone she knew that I had forced myself on her that night in one last attempt to get some before we broke up, and that I had left after the act was completed in order to protect her image. However, despite the fact that she considered what I had done scarring, she decided not to press charges because she didn't want to make a show out of her life in court and felt she would be the bigger person if she did. After that, I spent the next few months living in fear that her allegations would lead to my discharge from the army and the establishment of a permanent stain on my character, but nothing came of it. The result of the retaliation five months later, Kate sent me a direct message. Once she was through with the pleasantries, she basically admitted that she had lied about everything and that she had faked everything, but she would never publicly confess it in order to preserve her own reputation My image be damned. I was angered by this, but I managed to keep my cool. I grabbed screenshots of the texts and continued to chat with her on the phone. Over the course of the next three months, she went through the following series of circumstances. Complaining about a current life situation, usually about John screwing up in their relationship in some way and seeking advice. Lamenting our relationship, how I never screwed up like John did, how she wished we could go back to the way things were and so on, ignoring me because John finally pulled his head out of his, did some huge romantic gesture, and saved their relationship. Launching a social media campaign against our relationship and so on, and so forth. This occurred three times in a row, and each time it left me drained and sad but it was something I wanted to happen for some reason. When this occurred, I took screenshots of what she said every time it happened. By the time I came to the conclusion that it was time, I had a complete SD card filled with everything I had gathered. For Kate, I purchased a large number of manila envelopes and addressed them to everyone I believed would be important to her. Her parents, grandparents, extended relatives, with whom she was particularly close and her closest friends, her job supervisor, co-workers, teachers and anyone else I could find who had a postal address. When I sent the messages, I made certain that anyone got them knew that they were between me and Kate it took three weeks for me to obtain my findings. Some of them who had previously messaged me with the intent of embarrassing and insulting me have now expressed regret for their actions. I particularly liked the one from her own parents, who went on to say that they were deeply sorry for their daughter's behavior, that they raised her to be better than she acted, and that they requested that no legal action be taken against her. This had crossed my mind, but I lacked the financial means or the mental fortitude to wage a legal battle. When they asked if I'd think about it, I promised them I would and that if I did, they would be the first to know, apart from Kate. I received text messages from Kate as well, with phrases such as, How could you abuse my trust in such a way and you shattered my life, you bitar. As a substitute, I read every rage-inducing email that arrived into my inbox with a happy grin and blocked her until the messages stopped coming. While I was unaware of the extent to which my revenge had impacted her life, I am aware that she had dropped out of school and had lost her employment as a result of my actions. I hope it was all worth it for John in the end. Edit. Thank you all so much for your wonderful words of encouragement. Many individuals have expressed concern about my mental health, so I thought I'd allay their fears. I've been seeing a therapist for three months and have made great strides. I can't begin to express how grateful I am to her for assisting me in regaining some sort of normality in my life.